it's so lovely to meet you. I'm Dakota, and I watched your film Saltburn two days ago, and I'm still thinking about it, and I'm not going to stop thinking about it for such a long time. <laughs> Good. I can't even put into words at this point, but I mean, my notes, I wrote down that it's a modern gothic romance slash horror, dazzling, debauched, disturbing, beautifully wicked tale of privilege. An absolute fever dream of excess in human morality and subtle queerness and a visually breathtaking display of hedonism. I want you to sum for me in one sentence the essence of this film. You know what? What's really difficult is I've been doing this for a while and I still can't. <laughs> I mean, I think you kind of nailed it there. It's, there were so many sentences it's, there. <laughs> I know. Well, I just, I've always felt of it as a kind of dark comedy mm. um, in the gothic romance read horror tradition love it i'm gonna start with my most burning question this is yes. a personal question i don't care yeah. about anyone else this is my question yeah. <laughs> whilst i'm a film enthusiast i'm a literature girl yeah and i can see all the incredible literature inspirations in this i see brideshead revisited i see the midsummer night's dream party which was absolutely incredible Thank i see you. the gothic notes and the settings and everything i want to pick your brain on this because i see the literary core how important was this to you and what are the literary inspirations oh my goodness it was so important because i think the thing is is that this is taking you know this is taking that very genre, the kind of subgenre of the Gothic, which is the country house summer mm -hmm. book or movie. So, so um, you know, obviously I was looking at absolutely Brideshead, um, then looking at even earlier than that, Jude the Obscure, the go between both the film and the book, obviously, and then Atonement, Line of Beauty, um, Rebecca. Uh, you know, there are so many. It, it's such a kind of rich British tradition that that feeling of of cabin fever that you get in a in a house like this and then mm. you know there are people like Sarah Walters making um The Little Stranger all of those but all of it and I think that's it for me I've always felt very strongly that in order to make something uncanny you have to make it feel familiar first yeah. so it was about using all of those literary references and, and film references that we feel so that you can then kind of upend them no absolutely I love that it's like a Frankenstein of all these amazing things that come <laughs> before you know I love the quote that being an artist is being in conversation with all artists before you and drawing inspiration and building on that and creating new incredible things. And so I love that. I can see that so clearly in this film and I absolutely adore that. Thank you. My absolute pleasure. I also have the same question for art because some stills from this film look straight like they're plucked from the Louvre. Like <laughs> I just, I see so much Caravaggio. Do you have artistic inspirations for this? Definitely. Me and Linus, um, the amazing cinematographer, used so many, you know, actually painting references when we were building this film. I can tell. Caravaggio <laughs> was certainly one. And then we were looking at the more kind of British tradition of portraiture. Uh -huh. So we were looking at um, people like Gainsborough, just the kind of the formal sitting, you know. So we ended up looking at, for example, one of the most formal shots of the film is, is during the karaoke scene. And so we have this very formal... Um, seating pattern everyone kind of sitting like they would for a portrait and it's lit in a very um, Caravaggio-esque sort of sideway and it's partly lit from a fire but it's front lit or front side lit from a crappy karaoke <laughs> machine so you always have that feeling that you know that you're in a painting but you're in the world of kind of 2007 too that it's always well what I always felt was that it always needed to be beautiful but also a bit shit by which I mean <laughs> human you know and the same thing sometimes you'd find there's a scene where we kind of push in through um Felix snogging a girl and it's a sort of red room side lit from one practical light and it's got this kind of still life arranged around them almost you know like these sort of beautiful little glinting things that you might have in any of those sort of Renaissance paintings but then when you look closely all the things that are picking up the light are Red Bull cans and old packets of crisps and it's sort of junk but but all together it makes something beautiful and composed and I think that's the thing of filmmaking that's so thrilling is that you know you look once and it's beautiful and you look again and it's disgusting and that's what this film is about <laughs> yeah no I love that I love the intention to detail everything's just so carefully laid out and it's incredible thank you, thank you.